In this video, we're going to continue our series on the basics of scripting in Unity with C Sharp by talking about conditional statements. So we've talked about variables, how to set those up. We've talked about doing some math in here. I've just gone ahead and commented out everything in this script that we've been using except for the variables at the top. And today we're going to talk about conditional statements, which is how we build the logic of our game. It's a way that we get the computer to evaluate statements to see if they're true or false, and then we can tell it to take action based on if what we asked at the check on was true or false. So we're kind of asking the computer questions, and based on the answer we get back, we're telling the computer what to do, how to make decisions. So today I'm going to be working on the update function. The update function uh, is called once per frame. This is your game loop. This is where every time uh, before the computer dr draws the next frame on your screen, it does all the instructions in here. So this is constantly running over and over and over, you know, 60 or more times per second uh, it's happening. So it's kind of your real time updating things as they go. So the basic conditional statement, so let's put a little heading here, is the if statement. So we start with the word if. So it's kind of like we're asking the computer question, hey computer, if, and then we put some parentheses, an open and a close, and then we put in an opening curly Q bracket, and I usually skip a couple lines and put a closing one in. So uh, remember the curly Q brackets in here are used to group lines of code together. So basically I'm going to ask a question, inside the parentheses I'm going to give it a condition to check, and if the condition comes back as true, if the answer to the question is yes, then it will do everything between these two brackets here. Any instructions I have, whether it be one instruction or a hundred instructions, it will do all of them only if this condition is true. So for instance, inside the parentheses here, let's put a condition. Let's check to see if we have, uh, it, let's, let's see if we still have any health points. So we have a health variable up here at the top. That's an integer. Currently it's got 50 in it. So in most games, when your health reaches zero, then you're dead. So let's just check for that. Real common thing we check for. So we would say if health, so the value of health, if that is less than, or let's say equal to, less than or equal to, if you want to check if something is equal to or less than or greater than, put the inequality sign first, like the less than sign, and then put an equal sign without a space, and then let's say zero. <clears throat> so if health is less than a zero or equal to a zero, if that comes back as true, then let's have it um, do a debug.log. Let's have it print this to the inspector, and let's say um, dead. All right, so in our uh, in our console, when we run this, if health is less than or equal to zero, it should tell us, hey, you're dead. If it's not, if health is not less than or equal to zero, what it will do is it will skip everything between these two brackets. All right, so now we have a way for the computer to have two different paths that can follow, right, if, based on the value of health. That's why we call this a conditional statement. We give it a condition right here, and then based on true or false coming back out of this, we do this or we don't do this. So let's test this out in Unity. I'm going to come over here in Unity. So you see health is currently 50. Let's clear out everything on our console. So when I hit play, it should not tell me dead. So let's just see what happens. See, it says nothing because our health is greater than zero. Now, if I come over here, I'm going to keep it in play mode. Since it's in the update function, it's constantly checking. So if I change the value over here to zero, you'll notice immediately it starts telling me that we're dead. And this number over here that's counting up, that's how many times I've gotten this message. So you can tell that uh, over 600 times in the time since I hit play, now we're 800 times, it has sent this message to the console because the update function is constantly running. It's run over a thousand times now since I've been talking. Um, that's, it's doing it this way because I have this collapse button pushed in right here. If I uncollapse it, it'll give me one line for each statement. So I've got, you know, well over a thousand lines here. If I hit collapse, it just takes all the messages that are exactly the same and combines them together. So that's a nice way to look at things in your console 
uh, if you're getting a lot of spammed messages out of here. So uh, you can see that if I change this back to a one, see how the number stopped going up? I could clear out my console here and nothing comes back. That's because I'm now greater than zero, okay? So that is what a conditional statement does. If this condition here is true, we got it to do this. If it wasn't true, if this was false because we have more than zero, then it didn't do this. So that's, a, that's the simplest uh, form of an if statement. Now we can build our logic up from here because not only can we tell it to do this if, the, if this is true to do this, but we can actually tell it, okay, if this, if this isn't true, if this comes back as false, I have more than zero health, then I can do something else. And so we actually write it just like that. If this, then we do this, else, and give the else its own set of curly Q brackets so we can give it as many instructions as we want. Else, if this isn't true, if health is greater than zero, then let's do something different. So let's do a debug log. And in this debug log, let's say, alive. So if our health is less than or equal to zero, it's going to say dead. Else, if this is not true, then we'll say alive. Because if our health is not less than or equal to zero, then it's a positive number, which means we've got some health left. We're not dead yet. So let's test this out now and so uh, to show how that works. So if I hit play at the beginning, it's saying alive because my health is 50. See how it's counting up here? So every frame is checking this condition and it's telling me, yep, still alive, constantly checking. If I take this to like a negative 10, now it stops saying alive and it goes to saying dead. Now it's hard to have negative health. I guess we really died. If I take that to zero, you notice it still says dead. If I take it to a one, it now switches and says alive, barely alive, one health point, but I'm alive. So it keeps counting up. So that's kind of a, a way to do uh, one thing if the condition is true and something totally different if the condition is false. And again, I can put as many instructions as I want to in these sections as long as I keep it in between these little curly brackets that start and stop the section of code that I want it to do. So that's called an if else statement. Now, if we wanna ask follow-up questions, then what we would do is we would modify this and instead of just saying else, we could say else if. So if I put an if after this else here, it would need another set of parentheses to give another condition. I can check a second condition. So first I would check, hey, is my health less than or equal to zero? If it is, I'll print dead. If it isn't, then I can go, okay, well, how about this? Let's ask this question then. Let's ask if health is... Um, less than or equal to 25. And if it is, let's have it say alive, but hurting. Because that's not a lot of health points, especially if you start with maybe 100 in our game. Okay, so it'll ask a follow up question. So if this is true, it'll do this and it'll skip everything else that has else's on it in this chain of questions. If this isn't true, then it will ask the next question. And if health is uh, less than or equal to 25, then it will say this. Okay. And then at the end of this one, I could put an else in here. And then here I could put in um, in my debug.log, I could say alive. I'm feeling fine because I've got more than 25 health points. So this is where kind of logic comes in, right? Logical thinking. Uh, you have to be able to ask questions in the right order, and you have to kind of think it one line at a time like the computer. So if I'm the computer, I come in here and I see this if, and I say health. Okay, well, what is the value of health? Well, currently it's 50, right? So it's going to say if 50 is less than or equal to zero, is that true? No, it's not. It's false. So it's not going to do this. It's going to say, oh, that's, that's not true. Let's go to the else here. Okay, well, let's check now. Is 50 less than or equal to 25? Well, no, it's not. It's greater than. So it's not going to do this. It's going to go look for something else. If there's another else here, then 
and else with no if over it will just always run. So if it gets to the bottom of here and it hasn't found this true or this true, it'll always do this. So now it's going to print alive and feeling fine because my health is 50 and it doesn't fulfill these uh, conditions here. So let's test this out so you can see uh, the example out here running. So health is 50, see right here. So we are alive and feeling fine. If I take health down to 10, it now says alive but hurting. Because remember we told it if it was less than or equal to 25 to say this. But let's say health is zero. Now it's saying dead. All right. So that is working the way that we laid it out. So again, what you got to think about is it's only going to do, if you're using an if and an else if and an else, it's only going to do one of these things. Okay, the first one that it finds true. So that's why I asked if health was less than or equal to zero first, because if it's not, then then we you know then we want to do dead. This one here, health less than or equal to 25. Zero is less than 25, right? But since I've asked that up here first, it'll take care of that condition first. Um, so really, what this is checking, since I did this one first, is it's actually checking to see if we're less than or equal to 25 and bigger than zero because we already took all those those numbers out right here. Okay, and then again, the else here is a catch-all. There's another way we can do conditional statements, and that's what we call compound conditional statements, and that is where we're testing more than one condition at the same time. So there are multiple conditions that have to be uh, met before it will do instructions. So let's do an example of a compound conditional statement here. So these are compound conditional statements. All right, so we, they start out with an if, just like normal. But this time we want to check for two things. So let's check to see if health is greater than zero. And if I want to check for an, for an and here, I would put two ampersands in the ands right next to each other, and is alive. Those are my two conditions. Then we have to do our open and close curly Q brackets for those. So basically this is asking, here's one condition before the and, health greater than zero. This means and and then is alive is my second condition. Now, is alive is a Boolean variable. Right here, see? Public bool is alive. Is alive will literally hold the value true or false because it's a Boolean. So in a, in a uh, conditional statement, if I just put the name of a variable, it's going to put either true or false there. So if is alive is currently true, then is alive will be true here, and that will come back as a true. If is alive is false, it'll put a false there. Okay, um, if we have a compound conditional statement and we use an and, with an and, all conditions, in this case both of these conditions, must be true for it to do the um, instructions down below. We can have it do a debug.log. And we could just say we have health greater than zero and we are alive. All right, let's test this out here. So we're going to go back out to Unity and let's click on our camera here so we can see our script and basic script. So you see we have, uh, let's hit play and see what it says. So right now, in our console, that debug.log is saying we have health greater than zero and we are alive. And that is counting up every frame as it goes through and, and, and does it. That's because is alive is currently true and health is above zero. If I take my health to zero, right now it is no longer saying we have health greater than zero and we are alive. We are alive, this is still checked, but health greater than zero is not true anymore. So both conditions have to be true, right? So that's what and is for. Both conditions on either side of that and have to be true for it to do the instructions 
that we ask for it to do. All right, so let's put a little note here. Um, both, oh, first of all, let's do this. We'll say and, that equals and, and then both conditions must be true for this to go. All right, that's an and. We can also do a compound conditional statement using an or. So that would look like this, if again. This time we could say if um, money is greater than, uh, let's say 20, or, now or uses two pipe symbols right next to each other. The pipe symbol is on this, the key with your backwards leaning slash. Uh, it's right under the backspace key on most keyboards. You gotta hold shift down to get it. It looks like two little kind of lines stacked on top of each other on the keyboard. And it gives you these straight up and down lines. That means or. So if money is greater than 20, or let's say money is less than uh, 10, Then let's have it do something here. So we'll do a debug log, and we'll say we have more than 20 or less than $10. So the way or works um, is just like it does in real life. If I have money greater than this or money less than 10, then it will do what's below it. So with an or, only one of the conditions has to be true. Because logically, we will never have a place where money is both greater than 20 and less than 10. It just can't happen. So the or allows us to check for one condition out of a list. All right. So if one of these is true, it will do the instructions here. If neither of these are true, so if money was... Um, let's say 15, then neither of these would be true, and it won't print out that we have more than 20 or less than $10. So let's just see that in action real quick. Clear our console here, and we'll play. So right now it says we have health, uh, sorry, right here, we have uh, more than 20 or less than $10. That's because we currently have 55 25, so that is more than 20. If I take it down to maybe a zero dollars, it still says that we have more than 20 or less than 10 because zero is less than 10. But if I put it right in the middle at the 15, now it is no longer counting up. See the number is no longer counting here? And if I clear the uh, console here, that message goes away. It no longer says it. If I take money back to a value that is within those two ranges, like five, then it comes back. So or means only one of the conditions has to be true. So this, there's two pipe symbols, equals or, and then only one condition needs to be true for it to run. Okay, so and all the conditions need to be true, or only one of the conditions needs to be true. And we can do all sorts of different complex combinations of ands and ors and else and you know else ifs and all of that to build our game logic. These are kind of the basic tools that we have to help the computer make choices so that it knows what it should do when different events occur inside of our games. So that is our uh, teaching on conditional statements. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time.